1970 Camaro 427 swap. Big block engines are indiscreet, but when you hear big blocks tear down the street, it's just a swap of your own heartbeat if you want the truth. This is what your uncle thinks about when he hears the word Camaro. Because this is the Camaro that sits in the garage next to the cooler of beers and the radio that's turned to the Padres game. Your uncle is under the hood while his gelatinous friend with the straining waistband clings to the last cold Molson like Charlton Heston to his guns. Pure art. Pure waste. Sound and fury signifying nothing. The only meaning is beyond words with this car. And uh-oh, it's time for William Faulkner. We're comparing this car to Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner, and for this class, we expect that you already read the novel. The LS made big blocks obsolete. The big block 427 is Quinton, not long for this world. Their power and value is a purely male construct, just like Caddy's virginity. And many big block fans will rebuild these fantasy engines, keeping them running in order to materialize their fantastic story, which was never real in the first place. Oh no, no, big blocks do matter. You can do it, you can have superchargers and everything. But they're wrong. Like Quentin resenting his father for shattering Quentin's childhood ideas about Southern chivalry, uh, people make up all sorts of excuses to keep big blocks around. This is a loud, glass pack signaling, peacocking, huge trap, dick pills, docking, dry humping, kissing in a tent while rain falls outside and I finally found someone who understands me and it's okay that I fart. Muscle car from the first Nixon administration. Three speed turbo 400 automatic. Has nothing to do with forced induction, that's what General Motors called their automatics, the turbo 400. No overdrive, just as a 65, 70 miles an hour, this seven liter big block is turning 2,500 to 3,000 RPM. This is a big block swap. A 1970 Camaro never came with a 427 cubic inch motor. The second gen Camaros had seven engine choices. 3.8 liter V6, 3.8 liter inline six, 4.1 liter inline six, 5 liter V8, 5.7 liter V8, that's the ubiquitous 350, a 6.5 liter V8, and a 6.6 .6 liter V8. But 420 cubic inches is 7 liters. Because more is more er. And in the early 90s, when the muscle car bubble began its inflation fetish, this Camaro got a 7 liter or 427 cubic inch swapped in. Which makes sense because the LS1 didn't come out until 1997 and even if someone wanted to swap it into a second gen Camaro then, it would be cost prohibitive because all new technology is expensive at launch. But in the early 90s, a 427, let's be honest, truck engine, was more affordable. So here we are. The 1970s Camaro with its front engine, rear wheel drive layout, has a body style that caused to mind chevron mustaches, Leonard Skinner, and two millimeter thick pubes. Muscle cars don't really look like this anymore. I mean, they try, but they can't look like this anymore because we live in a society that privileges bare ass smoothness, round edges, and soft features. You can you can smell the oil through your computer screen or phone screen right now with a car like this. They smell like they've been lived in, that they've been worked on, that they've been fussed over. But with a lot of cars today, you can practically smell the, the heat from the CPU in your laptop as you tune it. There's a slick sheen of newness. And once that wears off, what, what do you really have but a car that's slowly depreciating in value with each mile? With the debut of the small block V8 in 1955 and its... <laughs> subsequent popularity in the decades that follow, Chevy was coming up with ways to compensate for the power demands of larger vehicles that had become popular following World War II. 
While the small block was fine for your rank-and-file daily drivers, the trucks and bigger family station wagons needed a heavy-duty engine to handle the power load. So Chevy introduced the 427 cubic inch version of their Mark IV engine in 1966. Big blocks became a Chevrolet standard, finding its way into everything from the Impala to the Corvette to this Camaro. And really, if it wasn't General Motors popularizing the big block engine in the States, it would have been someone else. Evolution was already headed in this direction. This is America, after all. Big may be a four-letter word everywhere else, but here, it's a way of life. But following along with the Faulkner comparisons, the big block engines call to mind the miserable old lady from A Rose for Emily. In much the same way Emily Grierson is something to be endured and tolerated by her entire small town community, big block engines and the communities that pop up around them are something we just sort of humor. They're big, wasteful, and they have a certain sense of entitlement to the privilege of waste. Their internal combustion aristocracy is the exemption from time's gentle rot because they've always been around and they always will be. Their relevance is declining, but even if we don't always celebrate our elders, it's a common courtesy to grant them the dignity of a patient audience. I may have issues with this car, but at the end of the day, I still want to know what this engine has to say. Yeah, Grandpa talks a lot and his stories go in circles, but that doesn't mean I'm always feigning interest. I like those stories. I want to hear them again. And I'm embarrassed how much I'm enjoying myself in this car. I know I'm making less power than a Turbo LS motor, but I don't mind. I know I'm lunkhead dumbbell dropping curls for girls loud, but I'm okay with that. I know I'm surrounded by trash class 1970s fake wood trim, but I'm into that. I know I don't corner. I know this hood is making veiny promises which my dick will welch on. But I feel like the Hulk. Just a little bit. Just a little soupy soupy taste. And by the way, the bumper belongs here. Split lip bumpers weren't universal, but most of the restored second gen Camaros you see at car shows have split lips because it's a real LS, I assure you. I want to know what this engine has to say. I like Grandpa. He's still fun to drink with. And I'm not just feigning interest. So you want another? Yeah, let's have another. Mmm. Mmm. Swish and swallow. Enjoy every moment of these herculean, wheezing, but still frickin' balls-strong dinosaurs. They say just the sound of these engines idling raises your testosterone level. Listen. I just want a big block in my old Chevy, like an old 70s Camaro, old Chevy, with a walnut bezel radio, can I buy your big block Camaro?